um, your hash function will be always equal to this expression. The only thing that is chosen randomly is this parameter uh, vector i. Uh, a, uh, sorry, a. So uh, you always use the same type of hash function. The only thing that is chosen at random is this random vector to which you project the key, to which you find the scalar product between x and uh, uh, a. And you mod it out by m because this value being the index in the hash table has to be smaller than m. Yes? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if x gives you actually anything, right? You just want uh, x, well, say, you know, just for simplicity, because you can map it always, uh, you can always assume that the key is a very large integer. Okay. You can do a mapping uh, if uh, the key is something else. You can always encode it. Uh, uh, by, in, you know, uh, in a reasonable way, you can always use some coding to obtain a large integer. Huh? Okay. So, um, let's see why uh, this uh, uh, family of hash functions is universal. So, take any two distinct keys, uh, x and y. Uh. So, let the corresponding uh, uh, vectors of x and y be these two vectors. So these are simply the digits uh, of x in basis m, and these are the digits of uh, uh, y also in basis m. Then we have the following uh, feature. Let's now try to see when we have a collision, right? So in order to have a collision, this, the hash value of x has to be equal to the hash value of y. What does it mean? You see, given how our uh, function is uh, um, defined, uh, two uh, numbers, you see, the values will be the same if these two values mod m, the difference between these two values mod m is zero, right? So um, these two values have to be the same mod m, which means their difference has to be equal to zero, but their difference, uh, because a is a fixed uh, projection vector, can be written in this form, okay? So now x and y are two distinct keys. So then at least one of the digits of x has to be distinct from the corresponding digit of y, right? So without loss of generality, of course, let's assume that that's the on the first place, a0, because the argument is absolutely identical if the difference is anywhere else, okay? Uh, then what you can do is uh, you can keep only, uh, fix uh, this value when they are distinct, say this is x0, y0, and move all other elements uh, that partake in this sum to the other side uh, of equation. Right, so then you get that this product uh, is equal to this sum mod m. Okay, since uh, mo now we use the fact that the size of the um, of the table is uh, uh, namely m is a prime number, right? Because m is prime, uh, the set between 0 and m minus 1 is a field, right? When p is a prime number, that uh, then all numbers from 0 to p minus 1 form a field, which means that any element uh, will have its uh, multiplicative inverse 
mod m. Because we assume that x0 is not equal uh, to y0, we have that uh, you can actually now find mod m, the inverse of this element, namely an element so that when you multiply x0 minus y0 by this element, you get one uh, mod m, right? And you get an explicit uh, description of the value of a0 if the collision happened, right? So what does this mean? It means that if you know all the other coordinates of your random vector, if you know that collision happened, then you can explicitly compute what the first coordinate is, which means that your vector is completely determined providing that uh, you had a collision, is completely determined by its uh, um, remaining coordinates. So now uh, we, uh, we, we can do a very simple arithmetic. So for every sequence from A1 to AR, there is only one value for A0 so that with this random vector, you get the collision. And here is an explicit uh, uh, description uh, how to obtain um, A0. So uh, we can now do a simple calculation. Altogether, how many ways are there to choose a vector of size R of numbers that are smaller than m, right? Well, the sum total is m to the r, right? But you can choose in m to the power r plus 1 many ways the total vector with r plus 1 coordinates, right? So you see, all possible vectors, this is the cardinality of all possible random vectors. But the cardinality of vectors that cause the collision is only m to the r. Why? Because if you choose randomly the last r coordinates, the first coordinate is uniquely determined by this formula. So what does this mean? It means uh, this is the total uh, number of hash functions, namely the parameters of your hash function. This is total number of parameters that cause the collision. And of course, this is precisely 1 over m of the total universe, uh, right? So um, you get precisely this feature that fraction 1 over m of the total number of the universe will cause a collision of any two distinct keys. So how would you um, then uh, uh, do your uh, function? You simply pick R that is uh, log M of the total cardinality of the universe of your keys, right? Then you uh, at each run, you pick a hash function just by picking. So the same formula applies. This color product modded out by M, right? Um, and then uh, you, during each run, you freeze uh, uh, this uh, uh, vector and you use this hash function, right? Which is just... Um, a scalar product of x and y uh, mod m. And a good thing about uh, this uh, uh, function is because of the signal processing, uh, you know, prevalence of signal processing uh, software for multimedia applications, uh, all compute, all uh, modern CPUs like Intel CPUs actually compute uh, uh, scalar product uh, 
uh, this is essentially multiply add, right? In an extraordinarily fast way. Uh, so this hash function, so not only is guaranteed that uh, on average has extremely good, it has optimal performance, right? But it can also be computed at extremely efficiently on modern hardware because uh, scalar product is uh, so easy to uh, evaluate. So what is uh, the trick here? The trick here was if you have keys that uh, by some clever coding, uh, of course the keys can be alphanumerical, can be about anything, but uh, you can use some reasonable coding to reduce it uh, into just a single very large integer, right? For such a large integer, you represent it in, you choose a prime number, right, that is reasonably large, but it can fit nicely in the registers of your machine, and then you represent this key in basis M. Esse effectively, what this is doing is essentially just slicing this key um, in a clever way, uh, right? Uh, because when you represent it as digits, you turn your key into a vector. And then your uh, hash function is simply this. You pick another a random, a vector at random from the same space, uh, right? It is uh, uh, tuples from zero to M minus one uh, with R plus one, many of them, right? So you pick uh, just randomly a vector from the same space, and you compute the scalar product and mod it out by M because you need uh, um, uh, to get an index in a hash table of size M, right? So the random part is just this random vector to which you project uh, uh, your uh, um, your uh, key, right? And how is this used in other applications? You see, if you have a data that is extremely high dimensional, a good way to hash uh, such data that is a small modification of this uh, is to fix a bunch of much smaller dimension than the dimension of the whole space a small number of randomly chosen vectors. And then you map your object into the tuple that is uh, the values of projection of your key to these few randomly chosen vectors. And uh, this tends to produce um, extremely uh, good uh, hash functions that also uh, localizes very well because if two vectors are close to each other, right, uh, uh, then their projections will be also closed. So nearby things get hashed into nearby um, uh, values. So this idea is extremely powerful uh, and moreover, in a high dimensional space, uh, if you randomly pick a few vectors, uh, then they are with very large probability, they will be almost orthogonal. So the hash values will be essentially on each coordinate projection of, on each coordinate uh, um, will be uh, uncorrelated uh, to, uh, to each other. Okay, so any questions about this? Uh, yes? Um, so with this one, uh, so you can, for, for any given key, you can find the index. Uh, to, and then how do you retrieve the value from a given key? Sorry? How do you retrieve the value from a given key? For a given key, you compute the value. Uh, sorry, I don't, I'm not sure. Because, because the, the vector, the second vector is randomized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you 
during one run of your, during the life of your hash table, uh, the value of random vector is fixed. So all keys are projected on the same random vector. But in multiple runs of your program, right, uh, the hash tables will be different. And on average, the performance will be good, right? Because on average, the, there will be few collisions uh, um, in the table. Okay, so next, I guess today or uh, I will release the extra homework for you guys uh, uh, that will be just something very basic about uh, randomness and maybe an example of, uh, um, of uh, how to use uh, randomized hashing. So this is a good place to stop. Let's.